Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. As we continue in our first reading, um, our, the first letter of St. John, we're finishing chapter one, and um, so he's continuing the, the very similar message, uh, ba- basically about staying in fellowship. Everything is about staying in fellowship with Jesus, with the Father, and with the, the community of believers. That was the whole, one of the whole reasons yesterday why he was saying he has to share with us what he has seen and heard so we can be in fellowship with him uh, and so that then his joy will be complete. And today he's continuing this um, how to stay in, be in fellowship and stay in fellowship. Uh, so he, <clears throat> John is very, I like John, he's very black and white. <laughs> you know, he's very straightforward. Um, he says basically you're in or you're out. <laughs> There's now this mixture stuff. So for John, he always uses these images too, light and darkness. You know, there, there can't be light and darkness in the same place at the same time. It's either light or darkness, uh, good or evil. There's not a mixture. There's no, there's no, in other words, there's no conservative and liberal Catholics. They're just Catholic. <laughs> either a Catholic or you're not a Catholic. There's no, I'm Catholic, but... No, that's called a Protestant, okay? Either you're a Catholic or you're in the fellowship or not. You believe or you don't. You know, as soon as you take stuff out, well, then you're not in. That's what it, it's just very black and white. St. Thomas Aquinas was of the same mind, one of our great theologians, and basically he said, yeah, either you believe or if you have a different belief, well, then that's called a heretic. (laughs) We have a name for that, heretic, heresy something that goes against the traditional truth, the doctrines of the faith. John is very black and white. Boy, he would just have, he would go to town today with some of the things that we say, in the Catholics quote Catholics on the news today. Either, he said, if we have, if we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie. We do not act in truth. Oh, don't judge me, John. No, John, he judges. Uh, And we have to. The whole point is not to judge, to condemn, to make people feel bad, to shame people. John is telling us right away, the whole point is to to stay in fellowship. Fellowship with Jesus, with the Father, with the community. And if we're not in fellowship, then he's proclaiming the good news. We have an advocate, Jesus Christ. He is expiation for our sins. And expiation, we have to remember, means he takes the place. He dies. He was crucified. You and I should have been crucified because of our sins. You and I should be scourged because of our sins. You and I should be punched, spat upon, kicked, crowned with thorns because of our sins. You and I are supposed to go through all of that. You and I should die and have eternal separation from the all-holy God because of our personal sins. Jesus Christ is expiation. He came and took our place. He took the punishment that we deserved. He took the consequences that we should be responsible for. He is expiation for our sins. We should never take that lightly. We try never to take that lightly. That's why we have a crucifix in every Catholic church. Jesus is expiation. I should be there, not him. Me. That should be motivation to keep me out of darkness, to keep me in the light, in fellowship. It's not a a politic game. This is is no, um, you know, they don't take this stuff lightly. Light, this is eternal life or eternal death. It is a big deal. And so John is Proclaim the good news. If uh, He says, I'm saying all of this. I'm being black and white. I'm being crystal clear. Either you're in or you're out because I don't want you to sin. <laughs> That's why he says I'm doing it. Not to make you feel bad, not to shame you, not to guilt you, not because I want to excommunicate you or kick you out. It's because I don't want you to sin. And if you do sin, we have an advocate and, I, and you, we, I want you to confess your sin. He said, if we're faithful and if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. 
This brings us to con this is what confession is doing. It's not just saying, oh, I did this sin, and now forgive me, and I'm all good. I can walk out of here. No, like sin wounds us. It does damage to us and to others. And when we go to confession, we're asking not just, oh, just clean my slate, you know, a little etch-a-sketch, shake it, and now it's all back to, nor back to, back to normal. It's a, there's a wound. Sin wounds us, sometimes physically, sometimes mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And with every wound, what happens if you get a wound? Well, first thing you do is you pour alcohol on it to cleanse it. Clean the wound. Get the dirt and the grime out. Otherwise, it will be worse infected. So cleansing the wound. That stings a little. Doesn't it sting a little when someone says, hey, that's a sin. Hey, don't do that. That's wrong. Doesn't that sting a little? Hurts. We don't like to be told not to do something. Welcome to cleansing. <laughs> cleansing. So first, it has to be, become the confession. <clears throat> sometimes, we to, sometimes we have to be told to come, come to confession. And then we get stung as we're getting cleansed. The wounds of our sins begin to get cleansed. But then they have to be healed. The grace from confession begins the healing process. The deeper the wound, the more time and the more grace you need for healing. It's true for all of us. There's not an automatic, all at once healing in confession. For venial sins, yes. For mortal sins, it begins the healing process. There's time, there's things need to take place for more deep healing to happen. And a lot of times, full healing is only proven when once we leave confession, and there's a change of action. This is what John is teaching us. <clears throat> our, these are our basics on confession. So it's very important that we are not afraid to call out sin, not to shame or to make people feel bad because we need them to confess. It's a simple question. Do you want to be in, in fellowship or not? You know, because you can't have both. You can't be a Catholic, but do you want to be in fellowship or not? <clears throat> we call out sin. I, so we can all repent of it. So we can grow deeper in repentance, deeper in reconciliation with God. <clears throat> it's very important. Um, it just always reminds me too of a, one, one time I was called to jury duty. <clears throat> and when they find out that I'm a, a priest, a clergy, a man of the cloth, as they say, then they usually dismiss me, huh? one side or the other. And one of the first times it happened, he said, well, I really respect the man of the cloth, you know, but I don't want you here. I'm going to dismiss you from the jury because, you're, you know, you're too, you're going to be, I already know, you're going to be too merciful. There's a place for mercy, but I, I don't want you here doing the mercy. You're going to just let, want this guy to go off, you know. And I'm, you don't get to talk about it, but my first thought, reaction was, well, yeah, we're merciful as Christians, but you can only extend mercy when somebody has confessed a wrongdoing, when they've admitted they're wrong, they've sinned, that they need mercy. So yeah, Christianity, the good news, is about the mercy of God, but we have, the first step is getting people to admit they need it. That's why I need you to confess, to admit this is wrong. Remember, so Christians, we, that's part of the message. We're saying repent and believe the good news. We're getting people pointing out the sin so they can confess and receive the mercy. The world, the anti-Christ, anti-Christian world doesn't tell you you're wrong. They say, no, tolerate it. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, you're just a minority group over here. It's all good. People should tolerate everybody. Uh, coexist. A little bumper sticker, coexist. Newsflash, Christians, Jesus never called us to coexist. He said, go out and make disciples of all the nations. Convert them. Don't coexist with them. Convert them. That's our mission. Coexisting, we fail. We fail. 
so better just end this now, otherwise I'm going to keep going off on tangents. Lord, thank you for your clear truth that is written in Scripture and spoken to us by St. John. And we pray through his intercession that we would be strengthened with courage and, and grace to first admit our own sins, to have a, just a good self-reflection, introspection, to recognize our own sins or any way we might be walking in darkness or um, entertaining walking in darkness, that we might confess these and bring these to you and receive cleansing and healing so we can walk with you in light uh, to shine this, your light in the world <clears throat> and to receive your healing mercy and to be an example of, of your healing touch in the world. We pray all these things together through Christ our Lord. Amen.